decipher what is destiny and what is your autonomous ability to make change. You know, that, that's what I think of myself. You know, I'm, I'm not a primitivist. I respect the idea of primitivism, but I, I do have a computer and I do, I am part somewhat anyway, not fully, but I am somewhat part of mass society and I have come to a point in my life where I accepted that I am part of that and but my mind is moving towards primitivism but my life isn't moving completely that way so fast so I, you know but, and it's reflective of, of history itself because I mean the problems we are having today the seeds of which were sown like hundreds and hundreds of years ago so there's something to be said about having respect for what we have to consider as destiny because we are born at a certain time but we are born in conditions that we're not, we did not create. And you, know, you talk about your, your grandchild who is surrounded by technology. You know, we, there's also something to say about, you know, we have to be um, compassionate towards people that are completely uh, entrenched in mass society because when their crisis happens, if there is a mass crash, we are the lucky ones because we are already thinking about this. And they're, you know, the people that are completely in the center of mass society are not thinking about this at all. And, you know, I, I, I kind of was, I had the opposite idea of who was going to suffer. Because you said that it's the people, the rice workers, the people in, you know, the, the third, you know, the, in the so-called developing world. But at the same time, I, and, and I agree with that, I, that makes total sense. But, but it was funny because before that I was thinking who's going to suffer are the people who are mindlessly shopping in the shopping malls whose bank accounts are going to empty <laughs> and they have no internal resource to understand what's happened to them and they're going to be racked with fear and they're going to be they're going to be like seriously suffering whereas we are like us we are like starting to think about it now so if something happens we have some sort of you know internal resource to to work with it so you know that's why I was thinking about like you know it, it, as somebody who's putting out the idea of primitivism um, and, and and talking to people that are just smack dab in, in, in the mass society, um, how to approach them and how to get them to not feel afraid of the concept that you're putting out and to get them to at least start to, you know, for their own future survival, okay. you know, move into a, a, a better place in, in their thinking about. Okay. And the words for you to respond uh, to, uh, but that's, that's well put and, and uh, it has to do with practical things, practical skills. And uh, one of the biggest obstacles uh, is, as you say, I mean, uh, there is no, there's, there's awareness that hasn't been allowed to be discussed. Uh, and that's, you know, it's being blocked. It's, it's, it is. I mean, we have to uh, face, face up to these things and then the fears may diminish, I mean, because then we'll be working on alternatives. Like in the, the reference to permaculture, for example, the, the experiments on the lands that, that people are doing very seriously. And moving from, say, as you said, uh, uh, well, moving uh, from perhaps mass agriculture to horticulture, and then maybe fur further along to even, even narrowing that part of domestication to where as Kevin Tucker says, for example, there's horticulture that is really not domestication, like forest horticulture, and I've seen his pictures where, you probably know more about this than me, where you can't see where the garden is. I mean, they know where it is, of course, but it's not, it isn't fenced off and, and everything, but it's, you know, things are growing there, and that's, a, that's where it melts off into non-domestication, you know, down the road. But, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm stressing that because that's what I'm trying to contribute to. I, I don't know. I'm not on the land. You know, I, I don't... We're, and we're all part of mass society. We're all... I mean, you shouldn't be a bad thing. No, I don't feel bad. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how to do this stuff. You're just saying the complexity of it, you know. It's, yeah. It's, we can have any ideas you want, but, we, you know, we're still part of it. We're still... As, and as you said, we didn't choose it, but here we are. We couldn't do Green Anarchy magazine without computers. You can't do stuff. I mean, I was talking to Derek Jensen about uh, when I when I thought of well, I I got a couple of books out. Maybe I can do a little bit of what he does. You know, speak and tri you know uh, get to do that a little bit. And I remember calling him and I said, "Can you give me maybe a list of some of the colleges you've uh, gone to and stuff?" 
I'll write to him. And there's this big pause on the phone, which of course is technology itself too, but he said, and there's this big, and he says, write to them? <laughs> write to them? You know, what century are you? And you can write them a letter, you won't get an answer. You got to get an email account. Ever heard of that? You know, and, <laughs> you know, and it pissed me off because I didn't want to. I mean, I, I just don't want to. I don't want a cell phone. But we, you know, we're, you don't have a big choice. I remember back in the '80s, they used to say, when, when the PC thing got going. I remember some ads or, or you know, statements. Oh well, people, if you don't want one, don't buy one. Stop your whining. But well, but that's rapidly. There's no choice at all. Kids don't. I mean, you know, schools are all wired, I mean, and the whole thing, there's no choice involved. It's, a, it's, a, it's the ground of uh, life, you know, really. Anyone uh, you don't have a choice. Anyone who identifies as a revolutionary, to some degree, is a hypocrite, because if they're li able to live according to their personal principles, they would probably have no motivation for wanting to see change or fight, period. It's kind of self-deceiving to say that, because I was conditioned and coerced into this lifestyle due to the circumstances of the world, I am not really entitled to propose, like, um, a change, but and it's also important I think to recognize that just because you're thinking about something, like you kind of touched on briefly, it doesn't mean you have any capability um, in a practical sense to survive an uh, industrial crisis or economic collapse of some sort. You know, it really requires like the whole intention of primitivism is to show examples of how people lived in a more egalitarian way historically and what wasn't there or what was there, as opposed to what's there now in a complex hyper hierarchical society. Like, um, and I feel like it's important to look at the way that indigenous groups live historically and currently as, as guidelines for how people can incorporate practical things into their lifestyle that are without systems of control um, and provide um, systems of control in the sense of controlling others, non-human and human life, and also systems of control in terms of preventing us from self-determination. So I, I just, yeah. Please. I'm, I've been listening. I'm, I'm new as well. I've been listening. Um, and a couple of things have struck me. I mean, um, one one was um, where there's a lot of discussion, but is there a, is there a personal doing? I mean, if you are interested, then you go and do. Um, <laughs> you, um, Basically, the discussion and the questioning becomes, it's a personal thing, and you have to get out there and do. Um, the other, one of the other things that struck me was that people in the developing countries will be the ones who will survive. And those in the so-called civilized um, society are the ones who will not survive because they don't know how to survive. <laughs> the people in the developing countries survive daily <laughs> and it's part of their nature to survive whereas it is not part of my nature to survive um, because I really don't know how um, <laughs> so yeah and another thought came to me um, if we want to get away from um, automobiles and all. Um, I would have thought the Amish, the Mennonites, they live in a spiritual reality. We were you were talking about spiritual reality. And they have moved away. There was a decision in their development not to go into and not to buy into the um, whole idea of, of, of what surrounds us electrical, um, the cars, the, the whole development or modern development. And perhaps um, if you're interested, that is a way to begin. Anyways, those were some thoughts that arrived. But if I can just respond to the fact that the third, in the third world they survived. Uh, well, the, I don't know if you've been to the so-called third world, but I mean, I've been to the death mm -hmm. camps, and I mean, there are millions just dying because we're they're feeding, and everyone is feeding the West now. So when, for example, the ecology will collapse and there will be the flood, who will survive, for example, here in Montreal? It's just the West now. 
Westwood. And, and, they, and they 